Hi everyone! Last week I released my very first team page, and there is a lot to say on that topic. But first, let me introduce you to the game itself. Hidden Tactics is a video game adaptation of a board game prototype I created last year. So I thought it was a good idea to present you the game while also presenting you the OG, the original prototype. In this game you play as one of the four archetypal factions in the medieval fantasy universe, humans, elves, orcs, and dwarves. The main board is a battlefield composed of five lanes, at the end of which are located each player's villages. The goal of the game is of course to destroy as many villages as possible on the opponent's board. Each player starts with a selection of units and building. In the board game you would select those by drafting, while in the video game the players head into battle with a deck they created in the main menu. Each player is given a handful of coins and the first preparation phase can now start. The big piece of cardboard you see right there, that's the reason why this game is called Hidden tactics because the players can't see what the other player is doing during the preparation phase so it's hidden. The preparation phase is when each player spends their gold to buy units, buildings and place them on the battlefield. Once both players are ready, the battle phase starts. The battlefield smash. During the fight, the players can't intervene in any way, they can only watch. This is where the video game shines compared to the board game, I'll come back to this later. At the end of a battle phase, the board split, players receive their income and a new preparation phase starts. Knowing that the enemy cannot move the units he already placed, you can now adapt to his formation and try anticipating his moves when placing your own units. And that's all for the gameplay loop which is common between the board game and the video game. But not only the video game allows for a much more pleasant experience during the battle phase, you're not dealing with initiative values and calculating the damage yourself, and honestly, even at this early stage of development, it is a real spectacle to watch. I'm super proud of this. So not only the auto battle experience is much smoother on PC, but I also upgraded the game with many new mechanics and systems. Well, they might not be implemented yet, but at least they're planned to be. First off, mercenaries. Mercenaries are a neutral faction and come in four different power tiers. Each game will feature a random selection of mercenaries, one for each tier, and they will be available to be recruited for both players. Mercenaries are extremely powerful units that can allow to fill some gaps in your deck, but unlike your regular units, when they die, they won't respawn at the end of a round, so use them with caution. Spells. A deck can also feature spells. There are different types of spells. Some will target your units, buffing them, imbuing their weapons with elements, or even replacing placing them with legendary weapons. Some will affect the battlefield and will trigger after a certain time. Some will spawn some units and more yet to be designed. Heroes. Each deck will have one hero. This is a very powerful unit with a passive ability that will define at least partially your game strategy. And this hero also has active abilities that you can unlock. He's basically just a super cool and powerful unit. There are many more aspects of the game I'm going to leave out here. Economy management, building types, unit keywords, support units, card drafting during the battle, etc. Alright, so now that you know a bit more about the game itself, let's talk about the Steam page creation and the black magic behind that. First of all, I had to find visuals for the store page and for the library resources. And then I remember an old friend is working as an artist for board games, so maybe he would be available and interested to work on this capsule. So I contacted him and great news, he was super enthusiastic about this project. We've been communicating a lot on this project, he's been sending me drafts and he adapted to my feedback. It was the first time I collaborated with someone else on one of my projects and I really enjoyed this. I hope with this game I can start making a living to allow for much more of these collaborations in my next projects. Let me show you the final Steam banner, which is the final accomplishment of this guy's work. Just look at all these details, it's just amazingly beautiful.
By the way, if you yourself are a developer and you're looking for someone to build your Steam capsule, or even for some concept art or anything related to game dev actually, I highly recommend Nico Square, he's the artist behind this masterpiece. I'll put links to his work in the description so you can see what other styles he masters, and feel free to reach out to him on his Instagram or his Twitter. So now that I had the visuals for the capsule and the library resources, I needed to capture screenshots of the game. And I think it's pretty important to have some UI in your screenshots. It gives a lot of information to the player about how you're going to play that game. So I had to start creating UI. And you know how I love creating UI. I don't have a UI artist, so I went with the flat UI solution. This was really hard. I spent three whole days working on UI just for these like three or four screenshots. At least I have a base now to start working with for when I'll be actually creating that final UI. So that was three days of work. And then I had to create the GIFs for the page because every good Steam page has GIFs. And this is where I had to start using black magic. Because the problem is you're making a Steam page for a game that is not ready at all. And why are we making a Steam page so early then? Well, because on Steam you need to start farming those wishlists as soon as possible. It's almost mathematical. The earlier you get your Steam page out, the more wishlists you'll have on release day. There are of course many other factors. I'm not sure I get the grasp of all of them, but that's a basic rule of thumb. Here are a few situations I ran into when trying to make these gifts. Mino! Yes! Oh! And it was that way all the time. You think that beautiful description card of a unit appears when you hover over a unit in your deck? Of course not, you're activating it manually in the editor. Nothing in the UI is functional. Without mentioning all the different bugs you meet that just breaks everything and you have to start all over again. The main problem I had to build these GIFs, especially the ones where you see the whole battlefield in action, is optimization. I realize my game is terribly optimized. That is actually what I'll be working on right after I finish editing this video. And after my 11th take on this GIF, I realized these walls were upside down, and this is where you have to accept imperfection. You can see they're still in the Steam page. Okay, uh, that was all for this short video. If you want to help me out, it's super simple. Just head to the Steam page, I'll put the link in the description, and add the game to your wishlist. Your wishlists help me a ton. Like, really. Thank you so much for watching, and even though the game's release is planned for Q4 2024, you can still start preparing to press play.